Welcome back. Let's take a look at these little um, Milwaukee, the Red Lithium USB batteries. These are the new 3.0s that we find that kind of come in our um, flashlights, and these 3.0s are really good batteries. Some of the older ones were only, well, they still make these. These are uh, 2.5 amp. This is 3 amp, 2.5 amp, so 2,500 milliamp cells in these. And some of my older ones are getting to the end of their life cycle, so it's time to upgrade. There's no one else out there that seems to have upgraded one of these because, um, well, number one, I guess it's kind of difficult to do. This is going to be my first one. Um, but I, I, I think they're just kind of throwaway batteries. But the um, 2.5s are $20, and the 3.0s are like $25. So I, I got a head start on one of these. And what I did is I took my razor blade and I cut around this red top here. You know, just kept cutting, 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 and then I just finally pried it off. You know, it's glued in pretty good. And then I slid my cell out. Now what's inside of these is the Samsung 25Rs, which is, it's a good cell. You know, they've been around for a long time and, and they're really high quality cells, but they do have a life cycle like any other battery. And they don't work in the cold as well, I found. Um, what I upgrade all my power tool batteries to when it's time to upgrade is the uh, LG. And um, these are the HG2s, which are the 3000 milliamp um, batteries. They both have a 20 amp discharge. Um, but the LGs, they just seem to hold up in the cold better than me. Although the spec sheet on both batteries is both showing like a uh, below zero uh, discharge temperature, uh, negative 20 C, which is negative, yeah, negative four degrees. So it's supposed to discharge below zero. But once I kind of get in the teens, you know, outside, you know, you know, below 10, it just, they, they don't work. You know, the, the flashlights just don't turn on, they don't work. You know, especially with the 25 hours, but the LG seemed to just work a little better for me. So that's why we're upgrading to the LG. So this is what it looks like when it slides out. Um, they are spot welded on the end there. And what I do is I just take my razor blade and slid it underneath those spot welds. And I was able to slide it and just cut those spot welds right off. Real easy to do. I mean, you got to work it a little bit. Have a nice, sharp... Um, razor blade and then on the top here you know once you get that cut off I'm gonna lift up that tab and then really the whole little printed circuit board comes out um, you've got your temperature probe right here the temperature probe is right down here on the bottom of that PCB but that'll be temperature and this is of course your negative that wraps all the way around down to the bottom of the battery and then on the top you know, we've got, which I've already cut this one off. I'm just trying to show you what it looks like there. You know, that's going to be for the positive. So it is also spot welded on. So again, just kind of took my razor blade, kind of slid it under here. And I was able just to pop those spot welds right off. And that tab comes off, you know, along with the top plastic piece. So now we are going to re-spot weld this. And you can't really mess this up that printed circuit board only fits on that one way so let's see if we can't spot weld this i'm going to center it up perfectly um, centered on top of that new lg cell and yep we're going to use our cheap chinese battery spot welder that everybody loves to hate right um if you, if you haven't seen my review on this, I'm going to put a little card up here for you. Check that out. Um, there's a, more bad reviews out there than there are good reviews, but it's misinformation. People's, people's using the wrong battery and they're blowing up their MOSFETs, but that's another video for another day. So let's see if we can get this welded to the top. All right, so we got some good welds on the top. Now let's drop in our circuit board. 
it'll only go one way, you know, in the plastic top there. So you can't mess it up. Get that nice and centered up. And then let's weld the negative tab on. Okay, so it took a few tries, but I was able to get some good welds on there. That strip is pretty thick. I'm guessing that's probably a 0.15 mil. But, um, yeah, you just got to have a good flat surface there. Because, you know, when you cut it off with the razor blade, you still got some bumps under there. So I just had to make sure it was real flat before I could get those welds to really take. So there it is. Got the top and bottom. Got our new cell attached. Let's see if we can get it slid back into the case here. Perfect. All right. So I'm pretty confident that's going to work. So I'm going to mix up some JB Quick Weld. And that's how I'm going to weld. I was just going to try to fill that in with um, some JB Weld epoxy and, you know, and just let that ride. But I think I didn't damage the cap to a point where it's not reusable. So I'm still going to use the JB Weld and just glue the cap back on. Because you know, this is the last time that this battery is going to be, you know, able to be repaired. So I figure epoxy it together, get another few years out of this cell, and uh, then we'll recycle it, right? But, you know, again, that, um, to make a, a 3.0 battery is currently $25. Uh, we had a dead 2.5 amp hour you know just wasn't working anymore and we were able to upgrade that to a 3 amp hour battery for uh, the HG2 cells I guess are about almost six dollars now they are an expensive sale they're they're a good sell but uh, yeah so for six dollars now we've got a you know brand new 3.0 battery I'm gonna put the cell in my vise here. Just put a little bit of pressure on it just to let it dry. Okay, our JB well has fully cured and it, it turned out pretty good. I mean, you can tell that the cap's a little beat up where I had to pry it off there, but for the most part, it's it's going to fit any, you know, flashlight or um, anything that takes this um, USB battery. It's, it's going to fit in there just fine. So that turned out actually better than I thought. I really did think I was just going to have to build that up with JB Weld and, and um, not be able to use this end cap. But that worked good. So let's, uh, let's put in our Rover light here and see if it actually works. Well, the light came on. That's good. Put our cover on. Yep, there it goes. It turns on. Cool. So now let's plug it into the charger and make sure it's going to charge. That's the next big question. Yeah, so there it goes. Light starts flashing. That was almost a full cell. You know, it's flashing green, so it's up in the, um, I guess, the 90 percentile um, charging. So it's not quite full. That should be solid green when it is full. So, yeah, there you go. These little uh, red lithium USB battery packs can be upgraded. You know, like I said, I really like to use these um, LG, the HG2 cell. 
uh, 3000 milliamp, uh, 20 amp discharge. Um, these are really good cells for my climate, you know, the, the cold weather climate. Everyone wants to know, oh, what's the very best 18650 battery cell? And there's no good answer for that. You know, all the cells have kind of a different purpose. You know, what what's your situation? What are you using it in? Um, you know, maybe if I was in a warmer climate in Florida or something, maybe the um, Samsung 30Q or something is probably what I would want to upgrade these to. But um, yeah, the LG HG2s are what works good for me. It might not work best for everybody, but these are good sales. And they're about $6. Um, so, yeah, so for $6, you know, we fixed a $20 battery. Um, you know, if you just wanted to replace it with the original battery, the 25R, you can pick these up for about $3 a sale. But if you're going to cut open and do all that work, just go ahead and upgrade it for a few more dollars to the um, to the 3.0. So, yeah, um, that's all there is to it, you know, and if, if, if you don't have one of these battery spot welders, it is possible to solder those cells. You just have to be careful when you solder. You don't want to put too much heat into the cell. You can damage it, and you don't want to have a buildup of solder, you know. Sand it down, use a little flux, and try to get that, you know, um, solder to flow in just nice and flat. And it, 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 you can use it because even if you have a bump down here on the negative end, you know, where I kind of filled that up with JB Weld and glued the cap back down anyway. So... It, it is possible to solder it you know you know the little spot welder is by far the best way to do it but um but not the only way to do it so yeah there it is that is really cool man i'm excited about it um thanks for watching i'm gonna go play with this i'm actually going to um you know after it's fully charged i'm going to do some runtime tests because um, the spec on this is it runs at uh, the 450 lumen setting, the, the bright for two hours and 11 hours on the low. So um, that's with the 2.5 battery. So I'm going to test it with my new 3.0 and see how it does. So I got a little more playing to do. Again, thanks for watching. Out.